What's up guys, I'm Rich from Spray Black Studios. Last week I converted up some 30k inspired Alpha Legion Primaris Marines. And this week, it's time to get some paint on them. So then guys, the Primaris-y. A little idea that uh, Elston and myself cooked up of mixing up 30k inspired pieces such as heads, shoulder pads, weapons with the new range of Primaris Space Marines. We got a little bit of flack on social media for it but for me the results speak for themselves and personally I think these models look great. If you watched my video last week you would have seen how I converted up a unit of Alpha Legion Infiltrators or if playing 30k a unit of Seekers. For this week's video I'm going to go through detailed steps on how I've painted them up. Now as part of this project, Elston also made a fairly awesome unit of World Eaters using mostly the 30k parts with the new Assault Intercessor models. Following me finishing these Alpha Legion, I threw the challenge back at him to paint them up in 30k colours, so in the blue and white, but in a style befitting their psychotic, bloodthirsty nature. So now it's time for me to throw some paint on these models, and I'm going to try and keep with the theme of mixing the 30k and the 40k aesthetics and I've devised a little scheme that I think works really well for these Alpha Legion. I've chosen to paint up the sergeant of the squad due to that fairly awesome dragon scaling that he has on the chest plate. This will give me a nice range of colours and will likely be the focal point of the unit. As with most things, now we're getting into winter I'll prime him using Vallejo's black surface primer. Partially as it means I can stay in the warm to do it, and partially because in the cooler temperatures where there's moisture in the air, it does seem to get a bit of a better finish. Now for the main colour of these guys, we're going to use a technique slightly inspired by the absolutely awesome One Hidalgo. I'm going to start off by laying a nice metallic base. This will start off with Vallejo's metal colour magnesium, which I'll apply to almost everywhere on the model, only leaving the real most extreme of shadows black. Then mixing in some Vallejo Metal Colour Chrome in a roughly 50-50 mix, I'll add a Zenithal Highlight. This layer will be applied from about 20 to 30 degrees from the top axis of the model. This will make sure that all those areas where the light would naturally be hitting will receive the highlight and leave those shadowed areas just a little bit darker. To push this a little bit further, I'll then take pure Vallejo Metal Colour Chrome and apply a final Zenithal Highlight directly above the model. Now the highlights have been laid down, it's looking all a little bit bright and shiny, so we need to bring back a little bit of definition back into the areas like the armour plating and to the shoulder pads. To do this I'm going to take some contrast black templar and using contrast medium I'll thin it down and use it more as a wash. I'll carefully apply this so as not to get any pooling or build up anywhere that I don't want it. I'll also use this as a bit of a glaze to layer in a few more shadows into certain areas and just to build up some contrast onto those shoulder pads. Now before we layer on the blue, I do need to add in one final little touch and that's some edge highlights using the Vallejo Metal Colour Chrome. I'll go in and pick out areas like the edges of the armour plating, the top of the knee pads and the feet. This will help push that contrast just a little bit further. So with that done, the base coating is all done, and now I'm going to slap some paint all over it. Using my airbrush, I'll apply the contrast Akhalian Green, which is actually blue. Contrast paints are pretty thick, so for this I will need to thin it down considerably, with contrast medium and then with a little bit of airbrush thinner. Now, you don't have to use an airbrush for this, but like when using the brush, you need to make sure that you're laying down thin coats and allowing them to dry before going over them again. If you lay down too much paint then the contrast can still build up and pull in areas that you don't want it to and give you a finish that you're not really wanting. Now as you can see this has given me a lovely metallic blue colour and it's pretty translucent so it's kept all of that highlighting and all that pre-shading that we did in the first place. Now let's paint up those dragon scales. I'll start off with a base coat of Vallejo's dark green. This will take a few thin layers to get coverage over that metallic base, but when built up to full opacity, it'll act as a great shadow colour. 
To build the highlights up, I'll first go for a mix of Vallejo Dark Green and Citadel's Warpstone Glow. Using a brush with a nice pointy tip, I'll go in and pick out each one of those scales, leaving the dark green in the base of each scale to form our shadow. With pure Warpstone Glow, I'll then add in some edge highlights. Again, with a nice point on the brush, I'll add in a small V shapes towards the bottom of all the scales. This is much like when you paint the diamonds on Harlequins. To finish these off, I'll then add some tiny dots on the point of those V shapes with Vallejo's Escorpina Green. This will add that real top highlight and just make them pop. I'll also use the same process to paint up the Hydra on his shoulder pad. For the metallics, I'm going to go back to those awesome Vallejo metal colour paints. I did consider going for a non-metallic metal look on these guys, but after receiving a copy of the Sons of Hydra Black Library book and looking at the awesome cover art, I decided I wanted to stick with true metallics. So using the metal colour magnesium, I'll pick out all the shoulder pad trim, those aerials and some of the ribbing between the armour plates. Quite often for this ribbon I'd go for blacks and greys, but to keep the colour palette going the same we're going to stick with the metallics for this. Now using the metal colour chrome I'll add in a few highlights to those areas that would naturally catch the light. One of my favourite things about these paints is that although they do get great coverage they apply quite thinly which means that it's actually pretty easy to get some effective blends using them. To throw a little bit more definition into these areas, a nice simple wash of Army Painter Dark Tone will pick out those shadowed areas and give us some contrast again. I'll particularly pay attention to the rims around the shoulder pads to get a bit of a black line in effect. For the weapon, I want it to be black, but I wanted to tie it all into the blue armour. So I'm going to go back to my old reliable blue tinted highlights recipe. To achieve this, I need a nice solid base coat of Abaddon Black making sure to cover all those metallic areas so I don't have any odd tones or textures coming through. I'll then add a nice edge highlight all over using Citadel Dark Reaper. This will start to make those highlights read as more of a blue colour, which when you add some small spot highlights with Thunderhawk Blue, will really pop out and give the impression of this black having a nice blue tint to it. For the leather areas, I'm again going to go with a pretty old reliable technique and we're going to start off with Rhinox Hide as a base coat. With a mix of Rhinox Hide and Steel Legion Drab, I'll then add a nice edge highlight and add a few scratches and scuffs to give it the impression of being a bit worn and a little bit tatty, exactly as you would expect in the middle of a war zone. As a final highlight, I'll add pure Steel Legion Drab to the very corners and stippled on a few areas along the edges just to push that tatty look. Off camera I'll also give this a very thin wash with Drookie Violet to dull it down a little bit and to tie it in with the next step. Again inspired by the cover art of Sons of the Hydra, I'm going to use purples for the lenses on the weapon and for his eyes. I did consider using greens for this to push that motif a little bit more, but the purple on this will work very well with the blues and with the greens and adds quite a nice little spot colour. Starting off with a mix of Vallejo's Hex Lichen and Warlord Purple as our mid-tone, I'll give a couple of coats to all of these lenses. Now as these are relatively small areas, they won't require too much blending, so adding a layer of pure Warlord Purple to the bottom right of the lens will provide us with our highlight, and then pure Hex Lichen added opposite to it as our dark tone. A small little dab of Ultra and Grey into the Hex Lichen will give this the impression of being reflective and that is light travelling through the glass. So with the lenses done, I'm now getting into those final little details. Now whilst I do love that nice bright look of the armour, I do want to dirty it up just a little bit, so I'll add a little bit of battle damage. Using some Abaddon Black, I'm going to add a few little nicks and scratches to the Marine's battle plate and pick out a few areas such as the corner of the shoulder pad where some of the paint may have been chipped off. With a bit of metal colour magnesium, I can give the impression of some metal underneath. And then picking out a tiny highlight of metal colour chrome will give the impression that although it's still pretty bright and shiny, this armour isn't straight out of the factory. I'll attach him to an industrial base that I've made earlier and then using a bit of Astro Granite Debris, I'll blend that rock that he's standing on into the basin scheme. 
He does look a little bit out of place, so bright and shiny against that debris strewn race though. So, so the addition of some of the Vallejo black carbon weathering powder will tie him into that base and soften the transition a little so he doesn't look quite so out of place. And here he is, all completed. I've always loved the Alpha Legion colour scheme and for me this method produces a really eye-catching colour for the armour plates and to be honest this is one that I'm really proud of. So thanks for watching this video guys and please feel free to let me know what you think of this colour scheme down in the comments below. Don't forget to head over to Elston's channel and check out those awesome world eaters that he made and see if he takes up my challenge and pop some paint on those fairly epic conversions. Now as I mentioned previously in my video last week I really enjoyed building these models so much so that I've decided probably against my better judgment that we're going to make this into a full project. So although I didn't need any more projects it's already started to turn into a new army. Whilst I built these infiltrators I also did a unit of incursors to go with it and that soon became best part of well, probably just over a thousand points worth of marines in need of paint. Now I tend to work best when I'm working towards a target or working towards a deadline. And for this one, I've set my sights on entry into probably what is the world's most exclusive tournament next year. And that is the No Retreat Tournament in Gibraltar. The only problem is, the deadline for that is the end of this November. So, I'm going to be working fairly feverishly over the course of this month to get these guys ready to get some pictures for my entry to the tournament. So whilst I will try my best at keeping up my weekly release schedule, I am going to be putting most of my energy into this fairly monumental task and I probably will be filming for quite a lot of it. So there will be a video at the end of my progress of how I've gone through and how I've built up my application for the tournament. Even if I don't manage to get in, I think you guys will probably appreciate just a view of the journey that it takes to apply for something like that. So thanks again for watching this video guys. If you enjoyed it then please throw a like down below and if you want to see how the rest of this Alpha Legion army turns out then hit that big red subscribe button. And don't forget guys, even if painting a large army on a very tight deadline, if all else fails, spray it black and start again.